Good evening and welcome back to the Angry Cast and Fallout Shelter. How y'all doing? I was feeling a little nostalgic, as I often do recording these things. Um, you all know the drill. When I was little... No, but seriously. When I was little, my grandmother was a fixture around our our home. Uh, and, you know, in a sense. Uh, she was my mom's mom. And she was uh, single. Well, she divorced. And she lived on her own nearby. And she didn't get around that much because she was... Uh, she had some health issues and she was a little bit on the larger side. So she really didn't walk that great. Now, my mom was one of like five or six siblings. And... The backstory, you know, you don't need to know about how things happen in their family or whatever. Just know that when it came down to it, my mom was pretty much the person who took care of my grandmother uh, for the pretty much the uh, 20, oh, let's say here, 20, you know, 20 some years of my life, almost into my 30s. And that meant every Tuesday, my grandmother would be at our house for dinner. Now, there was about a 10-minute drive between my house and my mom, my grandmother's house. So, that would be, you know, that big of a deal. Um, my mom would go pick her up and, you know, she would come over for dinner. But before they did all that, before that all happened, she would usually run my grandmother around. Like, any appointments that had to be done were done on a Tuesday. She would take her to the grocery store. Now, granted, understand something about how this all works. The geography, it doesn't really matter. But just know that there was a 10-minute drive from my house to my parents' house. And so we would drive... Like, if it was during the summer, and I was, of course, under the age of 10, um, we, I couldn't be home alone. So my mom would take me in the summertime. We would go and we'd take Grandma around and then she'd eat dinner with us. So we would go to her house. It would be like 9 o'clock in the morning. 9.30. Pick her up. And then we would run. Now she had maybe... She had to go to the doctor's office. Or she had an appointment with a lawyer or something like that. Because, um, like I said, the backstory doesn't matter. But for the most part of her... Uh, you know, into her last few years... There was a time where she was having to constantly fight to keep her house away... You know, from being kicked out of her own home... From my grandfather, who I never met, never knew, and never didn't really have any kind of connection to. So, like these appointments would all be stacked upon each other on a third on a Tuesday. We go pick her up, take her running around, and we'd probably be done about maybe 12, 1 o'clock, two o'clock, sometimes three o'clock, depending on the the space of things. But you figure going ten minutes in one direction to go pick her up. And then having to drive probably a half an hour in the opposite direction, back past our house to go to the grocery store and any other place she had to go because for some reason my mom wanted to drive 15 minutes away from us to go to the grocery store. We didn't have a lot of, we didn't, you know, look everywhere you have like a Walmart every six miles. They didn't have that back then. They're, the grocery stores were not all, you know, all over the place. There were a couple around, but nothing huge, and they didn't have that much. So she wanted to go to this one grocery store that was about 15 minutes away. So that's where they went. So she would do all that, and then, like I said, about sometimes 2, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. I would be gone all day long with my mom and my grandmother, and she would do the shopping and then take her to do all their other stuff, and then we come back. And then my mom had to get dinner ready. Now, a lot of times... Um, you know, usually my dad would come home for lunch between 11, 30, 12 o'clock and my mom would make him lunch. You have it there. I freak, I don't know what we used to do on Tuesdays. I really don't remember because I know, you know, my father in all his, you know, earnest glory would walk into the house. Lunch. He just lunch. And it was, it was fun. It wasn't, it wasn't like he was demanding. He wasn't being, you know, where's my supper? No, he was being silly. Lunch. The way he would yell it out. And it was just, like I said, it was endearing. But I don't know what he did on Tuesdays because we were out running to the store. So then my mom would come home from doing all that and she'd have to make dinner for the, you know, actually the six of us. There was my, you know, my parents, myself, my brother, my sister, and my grandmother on Tuesdays to have dinner. And we would eat dinner. 
and then that would be like about five o'clock. So my dad didn't get home till five, five thirty. We'd probably like sit down and eat dinner. Um, we'd finish up six, six thirty, and then about you know my mom would clean up from dinner, and then about seven o'clock, she would seven seven thirty. You know she would take my grandmother home to her house, take all our groceries, and and you know that was the end of the day. And then she'd come home. And then the next Tuesday, she'd do it all over again. And that went on, I said, until probably about... Like, so I was born in 75. That went on until uh, roughly about the year 2000. So 25 to 28 years of my life, that's what was the, you know, the, the standard fare. Then after a while, it became more apparent that, you know, my mom couldn't run my grandmother around because my grandmother didn't get around much anymore. Um, and that's not to say that they didn't do other things. I mean, she would be there for holidays and she would take her to the senior center near our house, um, you know, on certain days. And she loved to be there. And she loved to be around, you know, the other senior citizens and, and, and enjoy that time. She got out. That was her, you know, community time, did all that stuff. So about 2000, though, things started to change and my, her health got to be a little bit harder and she couldn't um, get out as much. So my mom would go and run for her, bring stuff to the house and, you know, sock it and, and look in on her. And then, you know, as things got harder and then sometimes she would have a, a fall or whatever and she'd be calling in the middle of the night. My mom or my dad would have to go down and help her out. And then, you know, essentially that's when it happened is that she had a fall and she was actually on her bathroom floor the whole night until she was able to get a hold of somebody or somebody stopped by or whatever to see what was going on and she ended up going into the hospital and she never came home and that was 2003 you know it's hard to believe that it has been 20 years since that happened I remember because my um, my sister was uh, pregnant with my nephew at the time. He just graduated high school last year. And, you know, now it seems like the shoe's on the other foot in a sense. Because after 20 years, <laughs> now what my mom used to do, she can no longer do. And now somebody has to do for her. Um when my dad got sick back in 2017, 2016, 2017, and she took care of him for the next two years. He lived to 2018. Um, and then, unfortunately, either the stress of all that or underlying fa you know, factors that weren't really noticed or something else happened, my mom began having problems. She'd had problems with her knee and her hip and all that stuff beforehand, but she was still able to get around. But unfortunately, she was no longer able to drive because of these the circumstances. And so we had to have people um, assist. And my mom has been independent most of her life. Like I said, the, 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 the background of her, her backstory doesn't matter. Just know that she had been independent for most of her life. She took care of her mom before I was around. She took care of her younger siblings when she still lived at home. She is as stubborn as I am and is as independent and not wanting to rely on other people more so than me. And so it was really, really hard for her to have to accept help from other people, especially strangers in her home that she doesn't know. Strangers that, you know, we had to set up to be there in order to watch her take care of things, make a meal or whatever else. And then slowly we started to peel back that, um, you know, for better or for worse, started to pare that down a little bit to where she's now on her own, but she still can't drive. And she would love to drive. She has tried to get to the point where she could drive again. And it's just not going to happen, I don't think. I don't think her re reaction time is there and other circumstances are, are sort of in the way. Now, the three of us, my brother, my sister, and I, tried to pick up the slack 
and we failed miserably. I don't understand how, until he got sick, my father was able to take care of the yard all by himself, um, because the three of us trying to take care of it like just every other week, we were all failing and you know making it happen. It just goes to show you that the man was unstoppable until he had to stop. But you know that's again neither here nor there. So the fact that we had to um, come up with this game plan for what we were going to do with her, in lieu of having somebody in the house. Well, that all changed in the last couple of years because my sister, um, not soon, not too long after my dad went, was diagnosed with uh, Lou Gehrig's disease, ALS. You remember the whole ice bucket challenge, that thing? Yeah. Now, in 2018, she was fine. 2019, she started to notice some problems and had to have surgery on her arm. She didn't realize why, like, her arm started to, like, atrophy to, like, she had no muscle in her arm. And it started tripping. By 2019, she had, uh, you know, had more problems. And by 2020, she had been diagnosed. Now, anybody knows anything about ALS, which I know very little about, is that you've got, like, a three to five year pretty much prognosis. And she was already 18 months showing of symptoms. Well, by 2020, she appeared at my wedding to Megan with a walker. Still able to walk, still able to do anything. By 2021, she was in a wheelchair, and she could she could talk, but she was very deliberate in her speaking, and it was um like very it was drawn out like she would it would take her a while to get through a sentence and it's not because of a brain thing it's because of the the muscles and be able to, to do all that it's very hard for someone who has that to communicate if you know as they get further along in the progression of it so she was in a wheelchair but she couldn't speak as clearly and as well but she still could so conversations were she had to catch up or you had to allow time then by 2022 she had to progress to having to put a feeding tube in and a trach because she just swallowing and breathing was becoming harder and now she's fully bedridden pretty much I just got back from taking my mom to go see her um, because she's at a a skilled facility right now hoping to go home because she had to have a new trach put in and had to have vent assist on it so I had to drive from my home 45 minutes in one direction to go pick up my mom and then drive an hour in the other direction past my house to go take her to see my sister. It sounds familiar, doesn't it? And me being the farthest away, I tend to be the one that least gets called upon when things need to be done. Um, I'm the youngest that doesn't mean any make any difference but I'm also the further like I said I'm also the furthest away and it's harder for me to get to to do things because of the distance I have to travel to get there and like I said we lost one third of our our you know triumvirate to handle all these things and the last couple of weeks my brother was out of state and he couldn't you know be around to do that so I've been trying to pick up the slack um, we've all tried to figure out a way to maybe, you know, have some sort of, um, you know, just get a, a someone who can just drive her around. Just like, you know, go take her. But, you know, for the, it's not that big of a deal for me to take a time out of my day to go pick her up and take her shopping. Now, again, again <laughs> I go, I got to drive 45 minutes to her house and then I got to drive another 15 back in the other, in the same direction to take her to that grocery store area that she likes to go shop at. And, you know, she has other appointments and we try to like, you know, do all these things as we can. So I'm now, I'm now that where I was that kid in the backseat of the station wagon, taking my grandmother to the store and all of her appointments and to, you know, to, to grocery shop. I'm now the one taking my mom to do those very same things. And it's like I said, it's, there's a little bit of a nostalgia about it, remembering those times, but also it's hard because I have to recognize that, you know, 
I'm no longer that child, now I'm the adult. My mother is no longer the caregiver that she was. She's now the one being given care. And the mortality is facing me in the mirror because I see my sister going through what she's going through. I'm almost 50 and that's just like scares the hell out of me in a sense. <laughs> so it's ever it comes it comes full circle. It really does and it's 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 almost like a Greek tragedy in a sense. It's almost like you could write a script to this. It's almost like a trope. It's a cliche. It's it feels very familiar that there would be a story like this. But that's the truth of it. you know, that's the truth of how things work. That's how we are in our lives and that's how you know we don't do these things because we um, are programmed to do them. We learn them. We're empathetic towards doing them. But we've... That, that's how... We, that's what we do. I mean, it's like it's... In, I guess it is kind of programmed a little bit in, you know, instinct to do these things. But it's just so, so funny to continue that cycle that, you know, others have done before you. And if anybody out there has never gone through that, it's, 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 you know, it's something. It's definitely a something. And I would say that if you are that child that I was, then be better than me <laughs> and maybe stick around and do the dishes after dinner and help mom put the groceries away and take care of some things in order to help out so that you can take a little less off their plate because being on the other side of that table, I realized that I really should have done these things to help out because it's hard to do it now. And I have a support system that, you know, I mean, Megan just made a bunch of ham and I took a bunch of ham to my mom. And, you know, just help out more <laughs> just if you can help out someone else who's a caregiver help them out more take care of your caregivers they will take care of you and someday you may be in the same position that that's pretty much all of it and that's all i got to say about that so thank you for listening i hope you have a good time and or enjoy at least listening to some of these stories because i'll keep telling them if you do and take care of each other, take care of yourselves, and take care of the planet. Take care, Mom. We'll talk to you next time. Have a good one. Bye-bye.